Hi, today I'm going to show you how to automate the detection of the flag pattern and we're going to see this in a simple way. And if you are here for the coding part, you can download the Python code from the link in the description as usual. The flag pattern in trading is when the price starts bouncing up and down and decreasing in total range. If the high values can be approximately aligned on a decreasing slope and the low values aligned on an increasing slope, then in this case we have a pattern looking just like a flag. And this is important in trading because we can expect the price to follow one of two scenarios. Either it continues the pattern inside of the extrapolated triangle flag and we can take advantage of this by scalping one quick trade within the triangle range. The reason I say only one trade is because by the time we can clearly see the formation of the flag, price is very close to breaking out of its pattern. So we don't want to risk it, but we can still get away with one quick trade. This leads to the second scenario where the price breaks out above or below the flag shape. It usually retraces after the breakout, bounces of a support zone, as we can see here on this example, and takes a short term uptrend. In the opposite direction, we can apply symmetrical logic. The price breaks below the flag, retraces, bounces off a resistance zone, and then takes a short term downtrend. We can automate detecting this pattern using Python language. And this is an example of a flag detected by the algorithm we will see in this video. I will show you how to code this in Python and I will give some extra tips to improve the detection if you like to use this kind of trading. The code algorithm works as follows. First, we detect the pivot points and these are the highs and lows of the price. If a candle is higher than its neighbors before and after, then it's a pivot high. If it's lower than its neighbors, it's labeled as a pivot low. And these are the purple points on this example as detected by our algorithm. Then we try and fit the highs on a linear slope, checking if they are aligned and if the slope is negative or descending. We also do the same for the low pivot points. They have to be aligned and following an increasing or ascending slope. If these conditions are met, in a slice of a time window, then we have detected an approximation of the flag pattern. Let's get into the coding part and see how it all works in Python. This is our Jupyter Notebook file. In this cell, I'm loading the data from a CSV file. I have the Euro, US dollar, one hour time frame, the bid price, and it's going from 2020 up to 2023. It's almost three years of data. And the columns are the time, open, high, low, close, and the volume. So I'm cleaning the candles where we don't have any volume, so no price movements. These are weekends, days off, and the market was off. And I'm resetting the index, I'm checking if there are any missing values, and I'm printing the first 10 rows of the data frame. And this is how our data looks like. Then I'm defining a function called pivot ID, taking a data frame, the current candle or the candle would like to test if it's a pivot high or a pivot low, so it's index. And N1 and N2 are the number of neighbors to be considered before the tested candle and after. The tested candle. So N1 and N2 can be changed. These are parameters that you might want to experiment on. I usually use like three before and three after, up to five before and five after. So if a candle is higher than the previous three neighbors and the following three neighbors, it's considered a pivot high. And symmetrically, if it's lower than these three before and three after neighbors, it's considered a pivot low. So this function can test uh, the candle, knowing its index and the data frame, and it's going to return one if it's a pivot low, return two if it's a pivot high, zero in any other case, and if it's both, it's uh, returning three. So we don't want a candle that's higher and lower at the same time than all the numbers, because in this case, we can't consider it either a pivot low or a pivot high. Then I'm using this function, I'm applying it to all the data frame rows, and we are saving the result in a new column called pivot. To observe what we are obtaining, we can plot these points on a graph with the, with the candles. So this is what we can see here. So we can see the purple points are the pivots and it's working perfectly fine. So our algorithm is doing what we intended to do. We can verify visually how the algorithm is working. This is where all the magic happens. So this is a new function called detect 
flag it takes the candle id or the candle index the number of back candles the window and the plot flag which is by default equal to false if we want to plot the flag that is detected by this function so the most important thing to to notice here is that we have the candle id but also the back candles the back candles is a parameter which defines the window or the slice of candles to be considered before the current candle to try and detect the flag pattern looking back to this example this would be if this is our current candle for example this red one right here and we're trying to test if there's a formation of a flag pattern then we're going to look to the number of these candles so this is the number of the back candles. There's another parameter, if you noticed, which is the window. The window is used to avoid look ahead bias. And it's very important to make sure that the window we're using is greater than the um, N1 and N2 that we have been using here in the pivot ID function, just to avoid a look ahead bias. So if we're taking three a number of neighbors before and after, then in this case, the window here should be greater than three it should be four or five so back to the function in this part we're checking the highs and the lows and their indexes so these are the pivot highs and the pivot lows and we're only considering the tail three meaning the last three of those the most recent three highs and the most recent three lows of the pivot points if we have three highs and three lows if this condition is correct then we're looking to the order of these highs and lows they have to be alternating we have to have a high followed by a low then a high then followed by low and so on and that's what we are defining here or if we are starting with a low we get a low but then a high then another low then another high and so on they can be scrambled like two lows followed by two highs it's not possible we're looking for a perfect shape of a triangle when we make sure that these two conditions are verified we can now um, fit these points the highs and the lows using regression so it's a linear regression using the linear regress function we're providing the indexes of the lows and the values of the lows and the indexes of the highs and the values of the highs and we are interested in um, recording the uh, slope of the minimas and the slope of the maximas as well as the r min and the r max because when we square this factor we're going to see how good is the fit how linear are the points if they are distributed in a very non-linear way and we're trying to fit these into a slope we're going to get a very low r minima or r maxima but if the points are very close to being on one same slope on one linear segment then we're going to have r minima or r maxima that is close to one this is why i'm putting another condition here so if we have the order condition and then at the same time the squared r max is above 0.9 and the squared r min is also above 0.9 so we have a perfect fit for the upper slope and the lower slope and the lower slope is increasing and the upper slope or the maximas is decreasing so it's a um, it's a negative uh, number in this case we have a triangle or as we have called it at the beginning of this video it's the flag if the parameter or the argument plot flag is true then we're going to plot it if not we just skip and we return one because in this case we've just detected a flag with those arguments and for a particular candle or before a particular candle so now we can call the function detect flag provide the index of the candle the number of back candles the window and if we put plot flag equal true then we can see this detected triangle it's not a perfect detection but nevertheless it still is a triangle because here we're taking just three points and ideally here we have four points so if we would have taken the four points we would have had a better shape of triangle so now we can apply this function to all the rows and all the candles of the data frame and we're going to store the results in the column called flag so if before a certain candle we're detecting a flag formation we're, we're returning one so the function is going to return one and this is going to be saved in the column flag then i'm printing all the data frame rows where flag is different than zero so we have the formation of these triangles and we can see these here so we can identify for which candles we have these 
And you might notice like we have, let's say 2,189, 190, 191, 92, 93. So there's a series of rows before which we have a triangle. And this is completely normal because before this candle, we had a triangle and it's exactly the same triangle that we've just detected for the following candle. And then the second candle, the third candle and the fourth and so on. And we have another one here at 14,000 and so on. So we can just run this function over our whole data frame and we record the indexes or the number of candles. We identify the candles before which we have a triangle. We come back here, we put the index right here and we can plot it and we can see how it works. Now, ideally, you might want to play with the parameters of the model. So the number of back candles, the window and for the pivots, you might want to change these two parameters and one and then two because we were using three and three. You might want to choose something more selective or more forgiving, depending on your taste and how you want to uh, define your flags. And this is all I had to tell you for this one. I hope you guys liked it and found the information helpful. Until our next video, trade safe and see you next time.